Also known in Hinduism as Mahadevi or Great Goddess, Devi is an all-embracing mother divinity first worshipped in India since the prehistoric times. In the Vedic period, she started to be assimilated into the Hindu pantheon and so came to represent the Shakti, which is the female principle of divine energy. Both Devi meaning goddess in Sanskrit, and Shakti may be used more generically as a reference to any female Hindu goddess. She often appears as the female warrior Durga, while her dark side would take the form of the fearsome black goddess Kali, both of whom famously killed a number of terrible demons in Hindu mythology. The deity has a myriad of many other names, but it's in the guise of the goddess Durga, a more fierce personification through which she's most frequently worshipped and would be the focus of today's video. The goddess Devi in her warlike incarnation is represented as the terrible Durga, a name which means inaccessible fortress in Sanskrit, this being a metaphor given for her protective and militant nature. She is sometimes referred to as Durga Tinashini, which literally translates into the one who eliminates sufferings. Based on the tradition, Durga is also called Divine Mother because she protects mankind from misery by destroying evil forces in the forms of selfishness, hatred, ego and jealousy. She is the embodiment of truth and self-realization, the absolute soul of supreme consciousness that is infinite and beyond the law of causation. The goddess Durga is the inherent dynamic energy through which supreme consciousness manifests on its own. Durga is one of the aggressive aspects of the Devi whose earliest role in legends is to fight and conquer demons. In a contrasting aspect in later traditions, she became partly syncretized with both Sati and Parvati, the consorts of Shiva at different points of time. Durga represents the power of the supreme being that preserves moral order and righteousness in the universe. Let's note here that without this divinity, Lord Shiva has no expression and without Shiva, she has no existence. Shiva is the silent witness, he is motionless and absolutely changeless. And as such, he is not affected by cosmic events and has no direct connection with tangible elements of the universe. However Shakti is the power of Shiva, the dynamic creative mother who creates and at the time of dissolution, it's also her who swallows her own creation. Shiva and Durga are regarded as the twofold personalization of Brahman. Shakti cannot exist without Shiva and Shiva cannot personify without Shakti. Therefore, Hinduism proclaims the highest personification of the supreme energy to be a woman, which probably makes it the only religion that conceptualizes the supreme form of divinity to be female. This can also be demonstrated by the elevated status of women in Hinduism as a religion. Durga is most frequently depicted as a golden-skinned woman who even though being extremely beautiful, does not use her beauty for seduction but rather for entrapment, as she entices her victims to defeat them. In Hindu art and iconography, Durga is frequently pictured wearing gorgeous red clothes with several ornaments, and stands on a lotus or the head of a buffalo, but she most commonly appears riding upon a magnificent tiger or lion which represents power and determination. So by riding this fearsome beast, Durga symbolizes her mastery over all these qualities. The Puranas and some ancient Hindu texts described her to have endless features, so her illustrations consequently vary. Her bold pose is known as the Abhaya Mudra gesture, which means she bestow fearlessness on those calling upon her name. And just as the mother goddess confronts evil without fear, Hindu scriptures teach devotees to conduct themselves in a righteous and courageous way. Befitting her role as a mother protector and maintainer of cosmic order, Durga is multilimbed in a way that she may always be ready to battle evil from any direction. In most depictions, she has between 8 and 18 arms which constitute an impressive artillery, as each hand bears a symbolic weapon given to her by a specific god which equally extend to her the power of these divinities. Like her consort Shiva, she's also referred to as the three-eyed goddess. For her left eye is desire, represented by the clearness of a full moon in a dark night. Her right eye epitomizes action, expressed by the brightness of the sun and her middle eye stands for knowledge, symbolized by the sparkling blaze of a raging fire. In this form, she commands cosmic power and personifies the warlike energy of the universe into an entity even more awesome than any other god. Most of the time she seems calm and serene, 
but has the ability to use any weapon at will and even to turn herself into a mighty army to rid the world of the most threatening enemy. This side is further manifested in the form of the black goddess Kali, in which guise she killed many demons. So worshippers of this face of Devi seek her favors and dark powers, and as such make blood sacrifices and perform wild rituals during her ceremonies. Durga is not only a powerful force for cosmic order but she also listens to her devotees and attends to their needs. In Hinduism, the major gods and goddesses have multiple incarnations, meaning they can appear on earth as many number of other deities. Durga is no different, she is a multidimensional goddess with many names and has a number of benevolent forms that are popular in India especially among women devotees. Among her many avatars are Mahishasura Mardini, she is the destroyer of evil, with her ten mighty arms carrying lethal weapons for triumphantly slaying demons that threaten cosmic order. As Kali, she turns black as the night while wearing just a string of skulls as her only garb, personifying the terrible goddess of rage and fury. As the goddess of the subcontinent's most sacred river, she is Ganga and blesses whoever bathe in her Ganges. As Parvati, she is the serene and beautiful consort of Lord Shiva, standing by his side in the snowy peaks of the Kailash mountain. She is the mother of good fortune and arts who brings prosperity to all her worshippers, for her daughters are Lakshmi and Saraswati, the Hindu goddesses of wealth and knowledge respectively. Therefore, through all her forms, Durga encompasses the essence of salvation and sacrifice. Hindu religious texts equally talk about the existence of the ten great feminine cosmic powers known as the Dasha Mahavidyas, which can be basically thought of being the ten fundamental aspects of the Supreme Cosmic Mother's personality. Nevertheless, each goddess has a specific cosmic function in the universal harmony. Another such classification is based on various functions in order to protect the cosmos and keep the divine cosmic cycle running, so it's believed that when Durga appears as herself, she manifests in one of these nine forms. These nine goddesses collectively known as the Navadurga, are venerated on each day of a popular Hindu festival called the Navaratri, each form having its own holiday in the Hindu calendar and worshipped on a particular night to destroy evil and for the preservation of the religion or Dharma. The festival is said to be accompanied by special prayers and readings, decorations at temples and homes and dramatic events recounting Durga's legend. Durga appears in various episodes of the Mahabharata, the Puranas, and on later Hindu religious texts. Among these tales, one of her most famous mythological escapades is her slaying of Mahishasura, the demon who had the body of a man and the head of a buffalo as recounted in the epic poem The Chandapath which is part of the Skanda Purana. According to the legend, Durga was created for slaying a demon who was blessed with a boon that no man would be able to kill him. Empowered with this divine gift, the story says that the ambitious Mahisha wanted to take over the world by mercilessly killing innocent people on earth, then led an army of demons to wage a 100-year lasting battle against the gods in which he was the leader of the Ashuras or demons, while on the other side Indra was the chief of the Devas or gods. Doing surprisingly well, the buffalo demon and his army managed to defeat the army of gods and thrown them out of heaven, forcing them to wander the earth. The gods utterly defeated, eventually took refuge under Lord Brahma who gave a rousing speech to his fellow gods during which he told of Mahisha's doing. Having heard of the demon's misdeeds, pure energy blazed forth from the holy Hindu trinity, forming a pure energy of godhood. The gods witnessed this tremendous divine energy concentrating into a single mass and formed the goddess Durga, the embodiment of their collective power who then went out to fight on their behalf. She is both derivative from the male divinities and the true source of their inner power but also greater than any of them. As a warrior maid who was born fully grown and beautiful, Durga presents a fierce menacing form to those unfortunate enough to cross her path. However, as with many Hindu tales this is just one version of Durga's birth. In another version, she has already long existed as the daughter of the deity personifying the Himalaya mountains, and in this episode she is only asked to defeat the demon king and was offered strength and weapons by the angered gods in despair. 
The beautiful goddess adorned with golden jewels and equipped with the fearsome weapons of the gods, was ready to engage in battle with the fierce and cruel Mahishasura. The buffalo demon and his allies found their attention drawn from heaven to earth, as the power of Durga moved its way towards him in heaven. After a first attempt to kill the buffalo demon, the goddess realized that she would have to employ more subtle means to get rid of him for good. So it became obvious to Mahishasura that he was not as secure in heaven as he had thought, and no other demon could fight her and win. Mahishasura and Durga soon met again on the battlefield in a terrible clash which shook the mountains. She fought the demon king alone, after first facing his armies of millions by transforming herself to slaughter these creatures that plagued the world. Durga then faced him in single combat growing a thousand arms, but whenever she tried to strike him with a fatal blow, he would successively transform into another creature during the course of their battle, from a buffalo to a giant man, then would turn into an elephant and back of being a buffalo. At this very moment, the goddess pounced the creature and pushed him to the ground with her left leg then hold his head in one hand, piercing him with her trident which drove out the spirit of the dying buffalo. And with another of her ten hands, she wielded a bright sword that she used to finally kill him by lopping off his head. At last he fell dead, and the scattered surviving remnants of his army once invincible fled in terror. From heavens came a tremendous roar at the fall of this awful demon. The absence of any male influence as well as any male assistance in Durga's fierce battles against demons is worth noting. The most interesting facet of the tales of her origin is not that she is presented as Shakti, the divine power, but rather that she assumes the powers of the male gods to save the universe. The tale of Durga continues beyond that of Mahishasura, through the story of goddess Kashiki who is another of her many forms in which she fight two demon brothers, Shamba and Nishamba, but this would be a story for another time. Durga slaying Mahisha is a popular subject in Hindu art, as her most important form is as Mahishasura Mardini or the slayer of the demon king. One of the earliest representations is in a cave temple nearby the city of Malapuram dating to the 7th or 8th century CE. In the latter relief sculpture, a four-armed Durga rides her prancing lion which stomps over Mahisha's followers while the goddess faces the buffalo demon as she brandishes her array of weapons. This image of her is most commonly shown with eight or ten arms holding weapons, while the demon king may be shown half emerging in his human guise from the carcass of a buffalo. Goddess Durga is also intricately associated with three distinct aspects of the cosmos as seen in the Hindu thought process. As Shakti, she is the underlying power of the divine that permits and provokes creative activity, a creative force personified as a goddess. We saw this guise when the male gods combined their strength and vigor into the goddess who epitomizes power, action and strength in the battle with demons. Durga is the action and the power personified, and as such, she is a fitting representation of the idea of Shakti. Mahamaya or Maya, the supreme creator of illusions and attachment, the one whose spell even the gods cannot elude. She is the power that deludes an individual into thinking oneself to be the center of the world, the power that prevents anyone from experiencing the ultimate truth. It drives individuals into self-centered, egotistical actions and thus hides the underlying unity of reality and masks one's essential identity with Brahman. Therefore, Maya can be as either a positive or a negative energy. Prakriti is the physical world as well as the inherent rhythms within this world that impel nature to gratify and provide itself in its manifold species. She is both primordial matter from which all material things come, and the living instincts and patterns, that imbue the material world with its proclivities to sustain and recreate itself within individual beings. According to a Hindu text, it is stated that she is the world, and as the earth itself she conveys cosmic stability through the guise of Shakambari. In this form she is who provide the world with food, being both the womb of all creatures and what nourishes them as well. In her role as the cosmic queen, warrior goddess and demon slayer, Durga in fact protects herself in her aspect as the earth itself. The goddess is particularly worshipped by Shaktism and Shaivism, two denominations of Hinduism. One of the most important Hindu festival associated with her is that of Durga Puja, which has been celebrated for ages by Hindus. 
It's a four-day celebration held in September or October depending on when it falls on the Hindu lunisolar calendar, celebrated all over India with great joy especially in West Bengal. During this festival, she is shown with four other deities usually smaller in size, and are commonly identified as her children and thus flanked to most of her iconography depictions. The four days of festivities are actually representative of the homecoming of goddess Durga along with her children, which are marked by celebration and merrymaking. The deities are presented with offerings throughout the festivities, and on the victorious tenth day, the idols are taken in a parade to a river and immersed as a representation of bidding a tearful goodbye to the deities. This is usually a very emotional time for devout Hindus who accompany the idols to the immersion place. In some account, the festival is meant for Hindus to celebrate the goddess victory over the demon king Mahishasura, which begins on the same day as Navaratri, a nine-night festival which more broadly celebrates the divine feminine across India and Nepal. In general, Durga is perceived in northern India as the gentle bride epitomizing family unity, while in southern India she is revered more in her warlike incarnation. The worship of goddess Durga for many signifies the process by which the divine potential within every being removes its layers of ignorance and achieves the state of self-realization. Hindus celebrate this occasion at an auspicious time every year to constantly remind themselves of the significance of this very process, as they contemplate the progress made on their spiritual journey and celebrate with great joy the victory of the Supreme Consciousness over the demon of ignorance. A reminder that evil can never triumph over the power of truth. Durga Puja is the greatest Hindu festival in which God is adored as Mother, emphasizing to such an extent the motherhood of the Divine. Perhaps the most important testament to the power of this festival, is that even today the goddess is worshipped by billions of Hindus worldwide in exactly the same manner as she was worshipped thousands years ago. The goddess Durga also known as Devi is the protective mother of the universe, she is one of the religion's most popular deities and a protector of everything that is good and harmonious in the world. Sitting astride a feline, the multi-limbed goddess battles the forces of evil threatening the universal balance. Some popular accounts indicated that in the form of Mahamaya or Mahashakti, Durga pervades the universe in both material and spiritual as she creates, maintains, and periodically destroys it. When the balance of the universe is disturbed, she assumes various forms to restore order, and she is therefore, the guardian of Dharma which makes her akin to a female form of Lord Vishnu, since the concept of a deity assuming a separate form for maintaining the cosmic order is central to Vaishnavism. Durga is beyond all material attributes, eternal and forever omniscient. She is beyond any change, immutable and unattainable but reachable by yoga only. She is the refuge of the universe and her nature is that of pure consciousness. The mother goddess Durga is the symbol of the auspicious and true qualities that define the supreme being. In all her forms, she is the ultimate representation of infinite power, purity and the strength of purpose which resides within the divine essence of every single creature. As usual if you've enjoyed this video, do this channel a favor by liking, subscribing and by sharing it around with people who might enjoy it like you did. Goddess Durga will probably thank you for that great action. And as always, stay curious.